What is a concierge practice, and is this something I need with Medicare, or should I just forget about it? Well, uh, just in case you don't know what a concierge pro practice is, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute and kind of go through some of the pluses and minuses, and then, well, you decide if that's something you need. Hi, this is Bob Vineyard, your Medicare expert with the Georgia Medicare Minute. Okay, the concierge practices have been around for a number of years, 10, 15 years, possibly longer. Most of the practices are cash only. Most of them will not take insurance, nor will they file your insurance claim. So you need to keep in mind that if you incur services there and you're expecting reimbursement or accumulation towards the deductible or out of pocket, it's not going to happen. So you've got that issue. You also, a lot of times, they make these things sound as if they're just so great uh, that, it, well, you don't need insurance. As a matter of fact, uh, I saw a site the other day that, that compared their co-pays for certain procedures versus insurance. And, of course, theirs look uh, considerably better, at least on the website. Um, all right, a concierge pr practice is primary care only. Uh, you will have primary care physicians, you'll have PAs, you'll have uh, uh, nurse practitioners and, you know, and things like that. And a lot of them have a lab on site, they may have an x-ray machine on site, so there's some things that they can and will do. But it's primary care, so if you need cataract surgery, joint replacement, um, you know, stuff like that, you're going to have to go elsewhere. The other thing is, uh, again, because they don't take insurance, they, uh, they do not participate in any networks, and some of them, maybe all of them, I don't know, some of them are not uh, not approved by Medicare. So even if you know you went there and you had something, you said, "Well, I'll just file this claim direct with Medicare." Medicare is going to say, mm, "No, sorry, you know they're they're not approved with us, and so we're not going to reimburse anything." Um, all right, I had a lady ask me the other day. She said a friend of hers uh, has recently gone on Medicare, and they signed up for this particular practice here local and said, oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. Uh, do you think that I should do it too? And so I looked at it, and they've got, I don't know, they've got multiple locations, and at least here in Georgia, they probably have 50 or more uh, practitioners. Uh, mostly are doctors. There's a few other, uh, I think there might be a social worker in there, and a PA, and so forth. But most of them are doctors. And so the first thing that I did, because I couldn't find anything on the side, it doesn't say whether they take Medicare or any kind of insurance or not, uh, which is generally a clue, but a lot of folks don't dig that deep to even see, uh, nor do they think to ask uh, sometimes. But the first thing I did was I went on the Medicare site, Medicare Physician Finder, to look to see, well, let's see if any of these doctors are uh, are listed as participating in Medicare. And the first half a dozen or so that I looked at, no, they're not participating. Uh, they're not a Medicare-approved provider. Um, I did find a couple more, but they're not in the clinic. They're off-site, so I'm not really sure what that deal is. Uh, but there are, are a couple of folks, at least in this particular practice, that are not in the primary clinic, and they will take Medicare. Um, okay, so what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is if you're trying to accumulate uh, your, your outpatient deductible, for example, because this is outpatient services, outpatient Part B deductible, if you're trying to satisfy that, you're not going to satisfy by going to one of these clinics. Um, and the same would be true for out-of-pocket. If you already satisfied your deductible and you're trying to take care of your 20% share. Now, I'm talking about original Medicare. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, I see absolutely no reason to get involved with one of these things. Uh, and I don't see a whole lot of reason uh, to get involved, even if you have original Medicare. They're primarily really for folks 
who do not, do not have insurance or they have insurance and they have a really, really high deductible um, and have trouble budgeting for routine care. Uh, all right, how much do these things cost? Well, the ones that I've looked at in the past, uh, about $1,800 a year. Some of them will charge you a monthly uh, fee. It's not a premium, but they'll charge you a monthly fee around $150. This particular one that I was asked to look at um, has a starting, <laughs> this is from the website, has a starting fee of $500 for an individual. That's $500 a month. Uh, that's not $500 a year. Uh, you got to consume an awful lot of primary care to get close to $6,000. But they do have one they call uh, primary care only or something like that, you know, direct primary care, I think it is. And it's only $150 a month. Or maybe it's $100 a month. I don't know. But I mean, basically, uh, is this something that you need? Probably not. I mean, for example, one of the fee schedules they get, and they, and they talk a lot about how oh, our prices are much less than insurance. I mean, insurance would charge you this and all this kind of stuff. Well, there's a lot of embellishment there, and I'm not really sure where they get their fees, but I did notice a fee schedule for certain primary care uh, uh, procedures. And one of them was a dermatology uh, exam. And, you know, just a routine dermatology exam without doing anything other than just looking at you and say, yeah, you got some bad problems or no, you look great to me. Um, and their, their fee was $275. And I thought, well, that seems kind of high. Well, just coincidentally, I had my annual dermatology exam uh, just a few weeks ago. So I went on Medicare.gov and I looked it up and to see what the uh, dermatologist charged and what my share was. Well, my share was $62. The fee that the dermatologist charged was pretty close to what uh, this this uh, particular uh, concierge practice, which you know, was $250, $275, I don't remember, but I only paid $61. Now, if I had this concierge thing, and I went there and I said, I want my dermatology exam. I'd have to pay, you know, like four times as much as I had with original Medicare. Uh, so do you really need this? Um, my answer is probably not. Even if you're a, a heavy consumer, I know a lot of folks that sign up for these concierge pra practices our folks, they go to the doctor a lot. They have to have tests. They have to have blood tests. They have to have other kinds of tests to make sure that their medications are working, should they need a new, you know. And some people go to a doctor four, five, six times a month or maybe even more than that. And so they feel like they're getting their money's worth out of that, and maybe they are. Uh, I mean, you are getting personal one-on-one -on -one attention, and there's some spiffs like, you know, here's a hotline. You can call and talk to us anytime. Um, and, you know, so there are some spiffs associated with it. And if you want to burn that kind of money, you know, you go right ahead. But uh, let me just make it clear that you're not getting a deal. You're not going to save money by paying their copay, as they term it, versus what you would pay with with original Medicare. So, but if you know, if you want to dig in your in your pocket and come up with 100, 150 or 500 dollars a month, well, uh, go for it, but it's not something I would recommend. This is Bob Vineyard, your Medicare expert with the Georgia Medicare Minute. You take care. Have a great day.